In today's free affinity photo tutorial, I'm going to show you how I took a photo from my hometown, which is this one with my DJI Mini 2, and transformed it into this masterpiece by using only affinity photo tools. So, welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Strato Ayani from Illumis.com, the website and YouTube channel where we provide free tutorials for affinity photo and photography starting from this month for everybody with a camera that wants to elevate their photography game and want to hear my horrible Greek English accent. So, I promise the information I'm providing is a lot better than my accent, so let's dive into today's video by watching our amazing intro fair. Welcome back, thank you for being here. This is Strato Yann from Illumis.com, as I said before, and every week we publish tutorials like this one in order to help you become better at your photography and elevate your photography game. So today we're going to see a photo that I took with my trusty DJI Mini 2 drone, amazing drone, crazy value for their money, and we're going to transform it into a masterpiece. So let's dive into Affinity Photo. First of all, this photo was taken on and let's say a very strange day because it was right after a storm, the sun is hiding, we have blue clouds on the background, so it's kind of a mixed environment here, but we're going to fix everything. And uh, I used the row setting manual uh, program for the DJI, the, DJI, the DJI Mini 2 in order to have total control on how the photo was taken. So my settings are one stop under exposure, DNG raw format and shoot away with ISO 100. And I did this in order to preserve all the details in the shadows and in the highlights as well. Now, with the power of Affinity Photo, I'm going to open this raw file into Affinity Photo. Of course, it's going to start the editing process into the developed persona, which is something like Adobe Camera Raw. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to fix the exposure. So I'm going to bump up the exposure just a little bit. And as you can see here, it brightens up the whole photo. I'm going to play around with the brightness just a tiny bit and then I'm going to play with the black point because usually when you brighten up a photo that was underexposed you lose contrast and color and black point is your friend if you want to bring it back. Just do slight little moves because if you overdo it you're going to crush the blacks and you're going to create something like this which is black and with no detail at all. Once you are done you probably are going to notice that we have some really shadowy areas and some really blown out highlights but because this is a raw file we can recover detail from there so I'm going to click on the shadows and highlight panel to activate it I'm going to drag the highlights all the way to the left maybe this is too much so just slightly back something like this looks nice and I'm going to push the shadows in order to bring back some detail, especially from these areas over here. Now, once you push the shadows, you will notice again that we lose some contrast. So again, black point is our friend. We're going to drag it to the right and it's going to look amazing. Bump up the exposure just a little more. Now that we have recovered our shadows and highlights, maybe we will add some contrast by using contrast slider over here, add some clarity to get some detail back and voila! I think it looks nice. Let's see before and after in a split view. This is before, this is the after, before and after. We have already made a huge improvement but we're not done. I want to play with the colors because I want to have a very warm vibe. Uh, it looks more pleasing to the eyes and usually it draws more the attention of the viewer and it makes them feel good. So I'm going to select my white balance tab over here and I'm going to increase the temperature slightly so we get something like this. Now you will see that everything is popping, the houses look amazing, everything looks nice and warm and they look great like they should look during a nice summer Greek day. Finally, I will play with the tint. Maybe I will drag it slightly to the right, to the magenta, because if we have too many green tones like this, it looks kind of filmic, but kind of faded as well. So maybe add 4 to 5% magenta with a tint slider will make everything look a lot better. Of course, we can go over here at the details section. We can add some detail refinement if we want to make our image a little sharper because this is where you want to add sharpness in the developed persona 
that is capable of taking at full advantage of the raw capabilities of your sensor. And finally, if you go over there to the tones, sometimes I like to tweak the tones here with a small S curve, but usually I leave this kind of editing for the native affinity photo tools because it's non-destructive. So I believe this looks really good. So I'm going to hit the develop button and affinity photo is going to take all the settings that I applied to the raw file and break everything into the main affinity photo um, area and environment. Now we're going to use the affinity photos amazing tools in order to be able to bring this photo to life and really transform it. But before we go there, I would like to talk to you about our free full-blown course on how to create amazing black and white cinematic portraits and photos in general. You can grab this course completely for free. It's a full-blown course. Trust me, it's everything there. And we are giving this course away because we want you to see firsthand the quality of the tutorials we are about to produce this summer for Affinity Photo in our online academy. So you can go there, get the full course for free. Again, you're going to learn a lot of things, tips and tricks for portraits and many, many more things regarding uh, Affinity Photo and photography. And you will be happy that you did so because there are so many techniques you can learn from this course alone. So you can imagine what you will learn in our brand new courses that are on their way. Okay, now after this small break, let's go back to our photo. First of all, I'm going to click over here and select the selective color adjustment. I'm going to click it. And of course, my phone is ringing because I forgot to turn it off. One second, please. And we're back. Now, as I was saying before, I use selective color adjustment. And the first thing that I want to do is I want to go to the blues option over here and I want to target the blues and change them a little bit because the blue sky with this kind of uh, cold and bluish color doesn't fit well with the summery vibe that I have in the foreground with the houses, the castle, etc, etc, etc. So I'm going to target the blues with the selective color tool and I'm going to lower the cyan value. I am going to add some magenta, okay, just a slightly hint, and I'm going to add a lot of yellow, and maybe I will play around with the black if I want to add some black and draw out the bluish tones from this area. Okay, so this looks really good. Let's go to the cyans as well. Let's try the same thing. Let's drop the cyans. Now, it looks kind of black and white in the background. I don't like that. So maybe I will leave a hint of blue because it looks more natural. I will add some yellows as well to warm up the colors just a little bit. And then again, play around with the black slider. Now I'm going to close this and this is a before and after, before and after, before and after. As you can see, it has taken out the bluish tones from the background and it looks a lot more cohesive in terms of uh, color grading. Now, once I'm done, I'm going to go over here and again select another adjustment layer. And this uh, adjustment layer is going to be the Hue Saturation Luminance, which is the HSL adjustment layer. Now, I would like to target the orange tones over here and the yellow. So I'm going to click here, okay? And I'm going to be able to change the color of the houses, as you can see. So I'm going to drag it slightly to the right in order to make the reds a little more prominent. I'm going to add some saturation, as you can see here. And maybe I will play with luminosity and I will make them slightly darker. Then I'm going to target the reds. I'm going to play around to change them. So I'm going to drag the hue slider towards the right side in order to make them pop a little more with this kind of color grade. I'm going to add some saturation. No, this is too much. Okay, maybe I will take out some saturation and bring back the hue. Okay, this looks better and play around with the luminosity. As you can see, we can do many crazy things, but something like this looks just fine. Okay, and this is a before and after, before and after. A slight but important change if you ask me. Now let's play around with the colors a little more. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add a gradient map. Now here's a gradient map and this is how horrible it looks, but it's going to look amazing in just a second. 
I'm going to select the screen dot and hit the delete button in order to delete it. And as you can see here, the left side dictates what color will be added to the dark area. So as you can see, everything that is dark and in shadow is going to have some red added to it. And everything that is bright is going to have some blue added to it. Now, this looks horrible, but if you change the blending mode from normal into soft light, and you lower the opacity to something like 25%, you're going to start noticing the changes. But these colors do not work that well for this photo. So I'm going to double click on the gradient map and I'm going to click on the red dot and change the color by clicking here from red into something nicer, such as a nice bright yellow color. I'm going to click on the blue dot over here and I'm going to change the blue hue into something like a teal light blue, for example. And this looks amazing because the shadows are warmer because there is a nice warm sunny day by, uh, and we make them warmer by choosing this control point and giving it the orange color. And the highlights have this nice, let's say teal tone that fits perfectly with the orange color. This is the classic teal and orange combination. You probably have heard of it. Now you can, uh, of course, increase the opacity in order to make the colors more prominent. Or if you want more drastic results, you can go and select the soft light adjustment layer, uh, adjustment, I'm so, uh, blending mode, I'm sorry, and changing and change it, okay, we managed to say the correct word, into overlay, okay? And if you do that, it's going to be more prominent. So we're going to play around. Another one you can try if you want to play around is multiply, darken, etc, etc. Or you can leave it at normal and simply lower, let's say, the opacity to something like 5%. Now, you have a lot of options here. So each option, for example, normal with a low opacity, multiply with a higher opacity, soft light, etc, etc, with higher opacity is going to give you something different. Now, if the colors look kind of washed out, don't worry because we are going to add on top of everything a curves adjustment layer. I'm sorry, this is the wrong adjustment layer, so I'm going to click over here again, select curves, and we're going to create a classic S curve in order to add some contrast. For example, I'm going to click here, I'm going to click and drag this control point downwards and to the right, it makes everything nice and pop out. I'm going to click here to bring the mid-tones in the middle to brighten all the mid all the mid-tones and probably click somewhere around here to create a new control point and drag it to the left and upwards in order to make the highlights brighter. Okay, so this controls the shadows down and right, it makes them darker, up and left, it makes them fade away. These are the mid-tones, right and down darker, up and left bright and airy for the mid-tones. And for the highlights, it's exactly the same. All right, let's see. Now, if we push all these adjustments aside, this is before and after, before and after, a lot of improvement here. And I believe we have a really, really, really nice photo. Now, we can make some more adjustments if we want to make things look better. And these adjustments are the following. Number one, I'm going to add a new Curves Adjustment layer. And now I'm going to target the red, the green and the blue channels. And if I choose the red channel and click and drag this control point upwards, I'm going to add some red to the shadows, as you can see. Okay. Or if I drag it to the right, I'm going to add some green to the shadows. So this gives it a nice filmic look, if you ask me. Now, if you want to add some more red to the mid-tones, to the overall photo, you can click over here to create a new control point and drag this control point here in the middle and keep dragging it left and upwards. And as you can see, we have added some red to the mid-tones and now it looks more warm and nice. And you can do the same thing with the highlights. If you drag the highlights point to the left, all the highlights are going to become more red. If you drag it downwards, they will become more green and you're going to get this faded out look. You can do the same thing with the green and the blue, but for this example, I'm going to select the blue channel. Now, if you click and drag this control point that controls the shadows towards 
the right side. You're going to add some nice yellow tones to the shadows and these look amazing and work wonders as you can see here. <coughs> I'm sorry. You can do the same thing for the highlights. You click and drag the highlights control point downward so you can add some yellow tones and you can click here in the middle to create a new control point and break it. I'm sorry. Let's click here. Let's redo this and let's redo this. So you can bring this control point towards the lower right side and it will make everything look kind of yellowish. You can keep that if you want, it's up to you. Or you can bring it here at the center and have the mid-tones be quite normal. Or you can bring it on the top, towards the top left corner and this will add some blue to the mid-tones and it will make everything look, uh, let's say, uh, more coldish or something like that or cross-processed. But for this example I'm going to click at the mid-tones, I'm going to click and drag downwards and to the right just a little bit and there you have it. Now let's see the original photo with the adjustments we made from the developed persona and these are the color adjustments we created for this uh, version of the photo and please don't forget that we started from this photo okay this looks kind of dull doesn't uh, have does not have a lot of promise if you see it and you open it like this but with the power of affinity photo we created this kind of shot and we can salvage we can improve we can make cinematic our drone photos or any kind of photo because this technique works for any kind of photo and you can transform your boring photos into amazing masterpieces. So there you have it, that was the tutorial for today. I hope you liked this tutorial. I hope that you really enjoyed what we did here. We will have this file available for download so you can grab the file and see all the layers we, all the layers we used and the settings etc. So feel free to use this file as you want. And again, if you liked this video, you will love our completely free course on how to create amazing black and white and cinematic photos. Go grab it. It's at illumius.com. You can get it for free and you can have a taste of what is to come in terms of future courses that we are working on right now. And we will be releasing in probably a few couple months down the road. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much. If you like this video, you know the drill. Hit the like button because it helps with the gods of YouTube to spread out our video to more people. And if you want more amazing tutorials like this one for Affinity Photo and Photography with my Greek funny accent, make sure you subscribe because we release tutorials like this one each and every week. Okay, that's it for today. Thank you very much for your time. And until next time, take care, happy editing and stay safe. Ciao.